Hey guys, so this is part two of the series on breaking the cycle in my Nano Reef Fluval Flex 15 gallon reef tank build. So if you haven't seen part one, please watch part one around the actions taken in part one. This is part two and it's going to focus on uh, the filtration updates and the filtration changes that I made to break the cycle of the ugly phase in my reef tank. As I noted in the first one, at this point we are four weeks in. So four weeks post starting up and we are um, stopping overfeeding our fish as well as we have stopped feeding the phytoplankton. So again, we're 28 days in, four weeks, and we've had this outbreak. Uh, should have taken some action at the three week phase or the three week time frame, but work was a little bit hectic and couldn't get to it. So it got delayed to four weeks. As you can see there, I have brown algae, I have green algae, I have hair algae, I have cyano on the sand bed. I have pretty much a little bit of everything going on and um, we need to break that cycle. Um, everybody kind of goes through the ugly phase, how far you let it go. Um, before you break that cycle does vary. Um, again, I should have taken action at three weeks. Um, this is four weeks and it, it is a little bit farther than I would recommend anybody ever go. Um, but I couldn't get to it till now. So we're going to see what we do here to the filtration at the four week mark. All right, so let's talk about some of the updates we did at the four week mark to make sure that we are able to correct all these issues going on and get this tank back in line to get coral into it. So again, the two steps of breaking the cycle, breaking the ugly phase, step one is appropriate cleanup crew. That's a separate video, that was part one. Step two is adjusting the filtration contents. That is the portion of this video. I would also like to add that at this point, I added the remainder of the Microbe Lift Special Blend. If you saw the initial video I did setting up this tank, I dumped in about three quarters of this bottle and I dumped in the rest during this time. All right, so let's get into what I did to modify my filtration in the Fluval Flex 15 gallon here, the three chambers in the back. We're gonna go through each chamber and look at how I modified it. So if we're looking at this guy, uh, the way I'm gonna detail out the chambers is we're gonna have chamber one as the first chamber there where the inlets are at. Chamber two is where the fil filter pad is at and chamber three is where the return pump is at. So chamber one, we added Chemipure Elite, we added carbon, and there is ceramic media in there. So if we're looking at the context, again, Chemipure Elite, uh, we just basically pulled the bag out of there carbon we filled a bag full of carbon and we filled a bag here full of ceramic media so what we're going to do is for the first chamber we are going to take this bag of ceramic media and for the first chamber i'm just going to drop it in i'm going to let that ceramic media go all the way to the bottom of the first chamber for the next two bags, the Chemi Pure Elite and the Carbon, I'm going to actually hang them 
from the top. I wanna make sure I get good flow around them. So I don't wanna just drop them to the bottom. Again, I wanna make sure I get good flow around them. So I'm gonna hang them from the, clock, the top and clip them there. Um, that way I maintain flow around those uh, specific medias. For the second chamber, there's gonna be a filter pad, Purigen, and Roa Foss. We're gonna have a couple different things that uh, get run through here. So for that filter pad, obviously it's been in there about a month, 28 days, uh, four weeks. So we're gonna clean this. As you see there, we are cleaning it and that filter pad is absolutely filthy. So we're gonna do a couple rounds in the bucket and we're gonna get that uh, pad nice and cleaned up. So here we are doing uh, another round in the bucket and again, uh, we're getting that pad nice and cleaned up. Make sure we get all the detritus out of it. Make sure we get all the yuck out of it and we put back a nice clean pad. This does not remove um, the sustainable biomedia of the tank. What this does is it removes the detritus that causes nitrates. Uh, this does not remove what you need to keep your tank alive. All right, so now that we got this pad cleaned and we've removed all the detritus, um, and, but left all the bio load again to keep the tank sustained, um, cleaning it does not remove bio load, it removes detritus. I cut this pad in half, uh, straight down the middle, um, uh, for a couple reasons. One reason is I like to switch out my pads, um, but I also want to maintain that bio load. So the ability to switch out half the pad while maintaining a bio load in the other half is highly desirable. So as you'll see later, when I'm cleaning this tank, I will switch out half the pad at a time in order to maintain that by load. One of the other advantages it gives me is be able to put this pad into the tank around my light bracket. So looking at a couple things going into the chambers of this pad, first is the Purigen. Um, this is a great remover of organic material so this is a again it's a great remover of organic material uh, which does contribute to algae issues and um, helps remove that more organic material to keep algae at bay the second thing we're going to put into this chamber is roa foss it's going to go into that second chamber of the filter pad there and Roa Foss is a great phosphate remover. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that Purigen and we're gonna put it into that pad right around the light bracket in the bottom there. And I'm gonna just push those pads down um, equally on each side to get it past that light bracket and keep it that uh, Purigen in that uh, filter pad chamber and then here we go with the row of foss same thing making sure we maintain that media in that chamber and then we will push the filter pad all the way down to the water level again to make sure we have a full comprehensive chamber so for chamber three we're gonna have ceramic media and then we're gonna have just the heater and the um, return pump so we have ceramic media here that I put into a bag. Again, I don't like ceramic media in a bag, but uh, having it just loose in that chamber will make it very difficult to try to retrieve and clean. So it kind of dictates that I put it in a bag. Similar to chamber one, I am going to hang it from a clip to make sure that it um, one uh, receives good flow around it. So as you're looking at the different chambers here the tank, you can see that there is good flow around this media in chamber three. 
Uh, you can see that there's full water coverage in chamber two. And if you go back to chamber one, you can see that there is good flow around that median chamber one, which is why I didn't just drop it to the bottom. I wanted to make sure that we uh, maintained good flow around all the media in order to make sure that we maximized the use of that media. So at day five, um, I know you saw this in part one, but I'm going to recap it here. At day five, this is what the tank looked like. So most of that rock work has been picked clean. You can still see that there is some issues on the sand bed. Uh, all that cyano on the sand bed has been removed by hand um, daily for about a week. Um, as well as the Nasarius snails have turned that sand bed over. I didn't do any manual turning of that sand bed. I just removed the cyano and allowed the Nasarius snails to turn the sand bed themselves. As you can see, the rock work here has had a lot of work done to it. There's still a little bit of work, uh, work left to do, but at day five, um, there has been a lot of progress. And as you can tell, a few of the snails uh, didn't make it. Um, and that's to be expected. Uh, these snails were actually shipped in overnight versus buying from a local store. I just didn't have time to make it to the local store and it became easier to ship them in overnight. And um, you can expect some loss in that situation. So looking at the nine day mark, here we are at nine days and nine days later, the tank is essentially 100%. Uh, if you look at the sand bed again, I continued for a week to pull the cyano off the top. I allowed those Nasaria snails to circle the bottom as well as I had that adjusted filter media that again was removing the phosphates, removing the organic material, and essentially taking all of the aspects out of the water that contribute to uh, algae growth. If you remove everything out of the water that contributes to algae growth, there is nothing left to grow algae. Um, so hopefully you watched part one. If you haven't, please go back and watch it. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I will get more content out soon. Thanks, guys.